This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and today we're here for another episode of The Coolest Sim Racer Ever. In a recent episode, we built a DIY cool suit. This was the $1,000 idea that we built for only 60 bucks to beat the summer heat. The idea was solid, but we are on the search for the ultimate cheap answer to keeping cool during the summer. So in the comments of that video, there were so many great suggestions from you, the audience, recommending maybe doing a cool seat instead of a shirt, and that was in line with my thoughts for doing the vest. The vest offered the front coverage that I wanted as well, but it did complicate the whole design. Now in the end, we might end up following some of those suggestions like tubing in the seat or something like that, but Frank Rico of Rickmotech had an idea that I was very intrigued by. That was after he saw the episode and knew what I didn't like about the way it worked out. And he recommended using like a radiator and blowing that air on top of me, sort of like a poor man's air conditioner. And it thought sounded like a pretty reasonable idea for me. So I found a 120 millimeter radiator intended for computer water cooling. Then I found a 120 millimeter computer fan that was actually plugged into the wall instead of powered by my computer. The radiator cost me 15 bucks and the fan cost another 18, including the carried over parts from the previous project of the cooler, the quick connectors, the hoses. We're now in for about $80 on this variation of the project. So we can reuse the entire cooler portion of the previous build. And just to catch you up in case you didn't see that video, we took a cooler, we cut an access hole in the top. That way we could drop a pump in and have the hoses come out of the top along with the wire so that we could plug it in. Inside, we have a pump with a half inch piece of tubing into a step down connector to our quick connector size of three inch tubing and then the quick connectors themselves. The return line is just a quick connect and a piece of 3 8 inch tubing returning to the cooler box. Now for this new build, we do have a little work on the fan and radiator side, so we will have to put that together and then plumb it to the quick connectors to match up with the cooler side of our previous build. It all starts with taking the radiator fan and mounting it to the radiator. Luckily, they are built to do this, and the fan came with bolts that are perfect fit and length to bolt it to the fan. I did test out the fan pushing air through the radiator and the fan pulling through the radiator and found I got better cooling with the fan pushing through the radiator. So we bolted the fan to that side blowing through the direction of the radiator. The radiator came with 8 millimeter or 5 8 inch tubing. I cut this piece in half and attached each tube to the in and outlet of the radiator. I then used a step down connector to convert that 5 8 inch tubing to our quick connector 3 8 inch tubing and then added a quick connector to each end. By connecting the two quick connectors, we have the pump circulating water into one line, into the radiator, and out the other side and then returning to the cooler. Pretty basic. So with everything all connected and ready to go, I really wanted to find out a couple things. Did this even work? How much cold air will it actually provide? And how cold is that air? And is it gonna leak all over the place? Cause we did have some trouble on the previous version. We definitely don't want water all over the floor. So first thing I did was I grabbed a metal cup, something that I could use to measure the temperature of the ambient air. And then I turned on the fan to read the temperature without circulating ice water. The temperature gun said we were at 78 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 and a half Celsius. Then I put in my frozen water bottles and let the water chill. And when I tested again with ice water, the metal cup was down to somewhere between 67 and 68 degrees Fahrenheit or 19.4 and 20 degrees Celsius. We are getting about 10 or 11 degrees colder air than my ambient temperature. And on top of that, no leaks at all whatsoever, which was a nice bonus as well. But the big question, would it cool me? Would the airflow even reach me? So the next step would be testing it while racing. So I put the radiator and fan up on a small table and I put that about 18 inches away from me, blowing right on me. And I had a surge protector right there just in case anything went wrong. With the low airflow, my first concern was if the air would even reach me. And despite not feeling the flow of the wind, within just a couple of seconds, I could feel the difference in that zone. It was definitely making it slightly cooler around me. 
The nice thing about the low volume of air being moved is that it didn't cause any drying of my eyes. However, more volume would do a much better job. My first tests were brief and the system was working well enough that with improvements, it could be my answer. So at least in our initial testing, we know the system was offering cold air, but would it really stand up during the rigors of racing? Would it last long enough? And I did have a race coming up, so I got my system all prepped about an hour before the race just to make sure the water was perfectly chilled. And then we had about a one hour practice session, meaning my system had been running for a little over two hours before the race even began. And I had only put about three or four water bottles to keep it cool. But just as the race started, I noticed Gosh, it doesn't feel quite as cold as it did when I first started off during this run. So I added another two bottles before the race to help. However, it only lasted until about halfway through the race. With the ice melted again and the water only slightly cold, the relief from the system was minimal. Yes, it still had benefits, but not nearly as good as when the water was freezing. So after my first stress or heat test on the system, I was pretty optimistic. Now, admittedly, this was not as efficient as the cool seat or the cool vest or the cool shirt. All of those were definitely better or more efficient at doing the cooling job. However, they all had their inherent problems. We were dealing with wheat leaks. We were dealing with uncomfortable set seating. We were dealing with hard or difficult entry getting in and out of the rig. And then on top of that, we are dealing with leaks all over the place, which really never really made me that happy with that system. So for this version, I thought we're getting pretty close to two to three hours of cooling, but we need to make sure it stays colder longer. We need to deliver us just a little bit more cold air. And there are a few things that I think we can do to improve that, starting with better timing. And then obviously, adding more water bottles. So starting with three or four wasn't adequate. Let's go ahead and start with six water bottles right out of the gate and have colder water that much longer. And then solution number two came down to this. Why are we losing cold so fast in the system? And I looked at the hoses and I had about six, seven feet of hosing just sitting there in the room. Now granted, the radiator and fan need to be out there in order to blow on me, but all the tubing going back to the cooler is not insulated and it's just bleeding off cold air and warming the water essentially. So I stuffed all the tubing, as much of it as I possibly could into the cooler, including the quick releases and getting it to the point where I had as little tubing exposed as possible. And I could wrap these in a thermal blanket of some sort to make that even better, but we are losing a lot of cold right here in the tubing alone. So that was an easy solution just as well. And then finally, the last issue being airflow. Well, I didn't know what we could do to improve it. We had already test the push versus the pull on the fan and radiator combination, but I don't know if you recognize this weather vane, this airflow vane that I stole from one of my wind sims. And again, since we're on a 120 millimeter fan, it just bolted right to it. And I did some testing with and without that cone. And you can see that the cone alone increased the airflow by a very substantial margin. With these changes made, it was time for some final testing. Now I wanted to see longer lasting, colder air with more airflow. Otherwise, honestly, this project was gonna be a bust. So once again, I tested using my metal cup and got about the same ambient temperature of 78 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 and a half degrees Celsius. But this time, when I started testing the temps with the six bottles and the added airflow, we actually had dropped the temperature quite a bit. We are now getting as low as 62 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit or 16.3 to 18.6 degrees Celsius. And now I just needed to hold this level for three hours and we will have a viable option. And it hit the three hour mark and it did its job really well. It was very close to just as cold as when we started. In fact, it only dropped a few degrees and was holding about 68 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius after about three hours of run time. Still maintaining 10 degrees of cooling and as good as the pre-improved version was at its best. In the end, the cooling system did its job and it lasted just long enough to make it useful. But let's do the math on that. For a single day event, one day, one event per day, six water bottles did the job. 
but if I even had a second race or a second stint on an endurance team, I'd need another six frozen water bottles at the ready, and I think that might actually take it to the point of not being that practical. I can't keep 12 frozen water bottles in my freezer at all times just for my cooling system. So again, depending on how often you race, six water bottles seems reasonable. If you just race one race that day, it's gonna do a fairly good job. But if you race more than that, it might not be enough still. I actually found the amount of cooling to be just right as well. After adding the cone, it really did increase that airflow. It changed it from being a bubble there that kind of worked its way towards you. It also meant that if somebody opened the door or a gust of wind went by, that that bubble would go away and it would need to then be replaced by a new bubble of cold air and actually in order to be effective. With the cone, it had just enough volume or airflow to reach me and keep replenishing that cold air constantly and did a much better job. I mean, it was right on that fine line because my other concern, if anyone's had strong air conditioner in a car, when you get air that's too cold blo blowing on you, you start to get an ice cream headache or it can be a distraction in its own way. And in the event of a tragedy, there's no water or plumbing anywhere near my chassis or my electronics, and that's just an added bonus. So because of its simplicity, because of its relative effective effectiveness, I will keep this on my rig, at least for now. That is, until I come up with a better idea. So I hope you've enjoyed this second edition of Cool Sim Racer. I hope it gives you ideas on how to beat the summer heat while sim racing. And if you'd like to see some of the behind the scenes photos, check us out at patreon.com forward slash the sim pit, where I'm always posting pictures of these projects while they're just in their conceptual ideas and I'm coming up with them. And if you want to see more videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to us right here at YouTube. Thank you for watching. This is the sim pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.